Good day, folks. Happy, happy post Nui Blanche Hell, everybody. Woohoo! Um, I am Craig, and that is Jeff. Oh, you got the you got the finger. Oh, you're pointing at yourself. Oh, you yep. selfish bugger. <laughs> uh. Um, and we are right the sniffling, awful voiced forty forty men. Um, yep. both of us had to do a twelve ish hour shift uh for yeah. my company working for uh revel events for uh serving you know the city staff of toronto at some grub during uh, nui blanche yeah and it's uh they were it was mostly an nice people yeah they were mostly nice people. well it was um, it was kind of funny to see the different sites and I, as i explained it i went to some other um places to, to drop off throughout the city and and it was like that um seinfeld episode where all of them had a different subway experience um you know some of the other ones were like jerry's where everyone was you know just sitting down and yours <laughs> the way the way the way some yeah. of the, the people were at yours was on it was like kramer's when where everyone was just like clamoring they came in waves it was weird yeah. like they would get on our butt about getting like the breakfast stuff out. And they're like seven minutes in, they're like, where's our breakfast? It's like, dude, we just got it because it took half an hour for you to find somebody to let my dude up, <laughs> the food up in the first place. Yeah. So uh, people, chill. people seem to like it and people seem to be okay. They did. That's all that matters. How do they, how'd you guys make the pancakes all so perfect? They're all like um, exactly the same size. Secret. Yeah, yeah. I'm not let, not gonna let our things be I'm guessing there, I'm guessing there's some kind of tool involved. Um, there's, uh, well, there's, we have, we have a kitchen staff that can actually, that's adept at doing mass production kind of things. Um, yeah, but I mean, the they military. were literally the same size, all of them. They all looked exactly the same, except a couple were burnt on the end. So they were just the first ones they did. It's know? almost, it's almost but like, you know, that sour cream was... gun that you, that you have. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I met somebody today who, what, the, the, one of the girls that we work with. Uh, we were just talking. We had we actually did have a bit of downtime. We did. Yeah, we, had, we yeah. had between uh, when lunch went down, that was easy because nobody yeah. really came in at that time, and it was just like sandwiches and stuff. Yeah. But she's like, we were just talking about stuff, and she's like, you know, I've never seen super bad. I'm like, how's oh, wow. nobody ever seen? How's anybody never seen super? We were talking about how Michael Sarah sucks. I like Michael Sarah. No, and, okay, and sorry. she was saying Michael Sarah sucks, uh, and she was younger, so she's doesn't really get the Michael Sarah thing. I I, like, oh, I, I, I read this one he's thing, and it's and it's, per and it's perfect. It's it's like as if Michael Sarah just accidentally showed up on a set one day, and then just kept going, you know, like because that's yeah. that's sort of what is what his acting style is like. like well, and like, then I'm not supposed to be here. I'm not supposed to be acting, you know. And right after that, with the other girl we were talking, she mentioned that she had never seen Scott Pilgrim until like yesterday, and I'm like, wow. Because you know, yeah, we were talking about Metric because I was talking about the concert, and yeah, yeah. Uh, she's and I'm like, you know, they had that. I said, oh yeah, Scott, they had that the song in the movie Brie Larson sang, and she's like, what? And I'm like, yeah, the scene when she's on stage and and they're having like the darting their eyes at each other, like he's she's the ex, and then her the girl he's with is see her ex up on the stage. And da, da, da. I said it's a Metric song, and she's like, I had no idea. I'm like, yeah, if you go online on YouTube to look up, uh, I think I think the song was Black Sheep actually. And if you go to look up the video for it, the first one that pops up is the Brie Larson one. Not the metric video, the Brie Larson version. Oh, weird. Yeah. She's not a bad singer. She's kind of weird, and people don't like Taking it away much, our but... Toronto-ness in that one? Because yeah. Scott Pilgrim was actually supposed to take place in Toronto as well, right? It did. It, it, it did. Yeah. They like, had like, that's what I mean. like it was filmed, but it, but it was supposed yeah. to be Toronto in the comics, right? Was yeah, it? yeah, yeah. So, yeah. like, the, the concert scene was at Lee's Palace. But the funniest thing yesterday was, or last night, whatever, I don't know, <laughs> during the 12 hours of craziness, when I went to pick up that food from the, from the, um, from the guy in the civic, I bumped into this kid. He's like brand new. He's like, he just looked at me and he's like, excuse me, what's going on? And I'm like, 
where are you from? He goes, I'm from France. And I'm like, he goes, I'm an international oh, student. I've been in China for a month. And I'm like, oh, ah, you picked a hell of a night to choose to start walking around the city, buddy. <laughs> a lot of stuff for you to see. And a lot of roads you're not going to be able to walk down. Yeah, um, he was just amazed. He's like, I can't believe it. And like, well, yeah. it's, I so mean, I it's, told... it's something kind of cool that you know you don't expect, right? So like I asked him, you turn a corner like, and there's you... like this random art installation. Yeah. yeah. So I asked him what he want, likes to do. He goes, he goes, oh, I want to see all the sports teams. I'm like, you got to go to a Blue Jay game. I said, you're not going to be able to mm-hmm. now, but you got to do that. And he says, I really want to see a Raptor game. I'm like, yes, you got to go to Raptor oh, yeah. preseason. Yeah. Go see a Raptor game. I said, it's a lot of yeah. fun. He goes, I want to see the Leafs, and I'm like. Dude, like you're never I'm gonna 48 get years old. I've been to a Leaf game like three times yeah. in my entire life. And he's like, that's yeah. it. I'm like, I can't afford Leaf tickets. I said, nobody oh, can. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's yeah. impossible. And I said, go see the Rock play. Go see the, you know. Well, I would the Rock have said don't the play in Toronto anymore. They play in Hamilton. They play out of Hamilton now. Yeah, that was a uh, that was a little post COVID thing. Um, oh, I, f- I forget the reason why. But they uh, they now play out of what what was formerly Cops Coliseum. I think it's called First Ontario Place or something like that. Oh, don't quote you know who's going to be very disappointed about that? Who? Oh yeah, <laughs> Jeanette. <laughs> Jeanette, who, yeah. the one who had a picture of the face in the paper with a football covering her face, going, "Damn, <laughs> big football head." Yeah, well, she kids, was so proud of that picture. <laughs> um, let's let's chat about so baseball. Anyway, that's let's what's been going on in Toronto. Woo-hoo. Yeah, Jays oh my goodness! Clinched a playoff spot, but we're, yeah, yeah. we're still sort of well, fighting and it for sucks position, though. Yeah, they clinched the playoff spot when they were on the off day. That always kind of sucks. Yes, yeah. but well, man, we didn't do it. it they was, partied it was up Baltimore afterwards. Baltimore losing. Yeah, yeah, and so then the next day they do the party, and yeah. if you watch the sports that broadcast, Hazel May was in there, and she made the she made the dread she made one critical error that you don't make when you're going into a post locker room celebration. What is that air she made, Greg? Do you have any idea? Uh, well, you got to bring some. Well, I, hey, you don't wear anything good. You have to wear like yep. crap clothes for stairs. She was. She yeah. had. A, she had a rain jacket on. Mm-hmm. Um, and but then she you forgot have to one have some, critical thing. Uh, especially if you have long hair, you got to keep your hair ponytail, and you have to wear some kind of glasses. She had that done. She had goggles. a hat on. She had goggles. She did not have goggles. Yeah. yeah. But she had the brimmed hat, so it kind of was going around it. But you can see it yeah. after a while. Oh, but no, the you, coolest you're thing gonna, about you're the celebration, take a, a shot of champagne underneath the underneath the hat. It's gonna, it's gonna get there. Yeah, but the coolest part of the celebration, I thought, um, so the, the bullpen was having a picture taken together, right? Mm-hmm. And this, in this game that they won nine nothing against Boston, guess who pitched three scoreless innings in relief? Kakuchi. Kakuchi. Yeah. They dragged him into the photo with them and to make sure that to let him know like he's still like Manoa went and was like, excuse me, I'm going to bring you to where you should be. Over here <laughs> well, the Manoa can literally grab anyone because he's a giant. right? So. And again, this week, Manoa, six more scoreless innings. Yeah. Like just, you know what? I've never seen anything like this. Every single start he's made has been at least five innings, at least. And I think he's if he's not leading the league in innings, he's either second. He's probably second. Um, right now. Let's see innings pitched. He is second. Um, yep. but, oh my god! By like a by by a a third of an inning. Now Shane Bieber is one ninety seven, and he's one ninety six and two thirds. Now go look at the hits leaders for the major leagues. Hits. Oh, I, I bet you it's Marcus Simeon. Is it? No. Uh, no. It's Freddie. Freddie Freddie. Nope. Yeah. Oh, that must have changed. Look at the American League leader. American League. Bo. Oh, wow. Bo. Was... Yeah. And Bo is just, he was leading the majors at one point last night. So Freddie was He's third. More Trey down. Turner is just above him as well. So there you so go. Two, there was, two there Dodgers. was like a two days. That tells you how good the Dodgers are. Oh. Like, well, the, 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 the run differential for the Dodgers is disgusting. It's like 320 or something, or yeah. 310. And, and, the Yankees are 230, something yeah. like that. Um, so Bo is like he had, what, what did Buck say the other day? At the beginning of July, his batting average was 252, and it's now like 291 because he had another four hits yeah. yesterday. Yeah. Well, there, there was that there was like, that week where he was hitting 560. 
like where where you had like yeah. the, you know the three home runs in well actually it was it was four home runs in a in a day and then yep. six in two days yeah so the, there was a, a double header involved with that I, I'm just going to look up and I want to see if I can see what his uh, stats are for um, just September. Because just September? Oh, you can do it's that. It's got to be pretty crazy. Yeah, here, hold on a second. Uh, I can well, get I'm you. on baseball, baseball reference, right? Yeah, and then just do the last 30 days. Uh, he's averaging 415. Uh, he's yep. got 49 hits, 25 RBIs, 6 homers, um, 10 doubles. Um, and actually, this is this is pretty good. Out of 118 at bats, 17 strikeouts. Mm-hmm. That's actually and and three stolen bases. And that's what they were talking about. That he's it's almost it's like he just rediscovered himself towards the end of the season. And the other guy that's actually been hitting that's going a bit under the radar is Teoscar. Yeah, no, no, and, well, and 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 another good thing about Teoscar is Teoscar is actually his strikeouts have come down too because he was yep. like he was disgusting for a while. There was a there was a two week span where he had like forty two strikeouts, forty two. Yeah, like that's crazy. See, that's and, the thing that like, he's very all over the place sometimes, and that's that's the re- another reason why I think we will not see Teoscar in a in a Jays uniform next year. I just don't. You got to start thinking budget now. Because we have so yeah. much money that's got to be doled out still that we haven't doled out, you know. Um, I yeah. think they're gonna. I from what I've been hearing, I think they're gonna try and sign Vladdy to an extension this offseason. Oh, well, you kind of have to. I know he wants yeah. it, yeah. and I think they want to do it. I think they're not gonna do Bo though. I just have a feeling. I I do think that. that Bo has played himself back onto the team because remember remember our our sort of discussions about him at the beginning of the season yeah the first two not first even two the beginning months. halfway through the season yeah. we were like what the you know but oh good the save thing is good save <laughs> the thing is bo the, his defense is not improved from last no year. It's actually no, there's there's still the errant throw. Like, uh, there was a, uh, what was the game on Tuesday? Tuesday. I mean, there was there was a, a ball that he had a track out, and to be oh, honest, no, Teoscar like... actually should have called him off because oh, yeah. he had a, a that was a front that was not Bo's it. ball. I don't blame Bo for that. Ball. But then Bo right after that had like an errant throw that allowed. Uh, he said he was on he's, That's the thing. He keeps having these errant throws. Like I don't I don't discount his range. He has range. And he has the arm strength. He's like I was always worried about his arm strength, but he's got it because he did a play either yesterday or the day before where he went in the hole and did like a turnaround Tony Fernandez style throw, but with yeah. more with like more not as not as like up in the air. But he still has feet planted, but it was a laser right to first base. So he has a capability. But I honestly think they should get a shortstop because you're going to see a bunch of good shortstops in free agency this year and move that kid to second. I yeah. just think that's what you need to do. And if it's and then what does that do? Because I know with, uh, you'll say he's still growing. Do we keep right? him as a as a as as a infield replacement, or do we trade Gavin? Cab- Cabin's always going to be utility. He's going to be Ben Zobris pretty much. Yeah, with less. I, li- I like Cabin though. No, I like him. He's 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 serviceable. He's played a lot of first. It's another reason why I think Vladdy's had some issues. Like I know he had wrist issues, and I keep thinking there's something going on because Vladdy's. Like I think Cabin's played like forty, like twenty eight to thirty games at first base. That's a lot, considering that yeah. he wasn't on the team for a few months because of injury and stuff. Yeah. So um, Otto Lopez got his first hit, which is nice. Ooh. But somebody I wrote read something that about <coughs> him being Canadian. Is Sorry, Otto I was Lopez in mid cough there. Can- I didn't hear that. Is Otto Lopez somehow Canadian? I mean, it's, he might be as Canadian as Vladdy Guerrero is. Like, Vladdy's born in Montreal, but yeah. he's fairly Cuban. I had, I had one guy in his in the thing saying, like, well, Vladdy was born in Montreal. How come he doesn't speak better English? Like, uh, it says Dominican-Canadian. Um, he is yeah, born like in Santo like, Domingo, but, I mean, he's probably changed yeah. his citizenship, right? I mean, I'm well, no, he was born, born in, in Can- South Africa. He was born in Canada, I'm- lived here for three years, and then he left, he left for the Dominican when he was three years old. No, it says it says. Well, I'm just going on. I'm just going on this. It says born in Santo Domingo, but I mean, like I'm born in Johannesburg, yeah. but I have a British passport. You know? Yeah, so. exactly. And like, you don't really have much of your accent anymore because you haven't been there. I can throw the Afrikaans on any time, right? Because uh, oh, apparently, you... yeah, yeah. It's and and there's certain words too, but I'm yeah pretty Canadian. I mean, I everybody knows a South African accent because of one reason, of one reason only. 
Diplomatic say, immunity. Oh, yeah. I was gonna, I, well, because of that, I can also do the good sort of Southern Hemisphere ones. I can I can whip out a good Australian, a good New Zealander, too, because the three of those countries like to make fun of each other. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Here's a, Okay. Otto Area Lopez spent his formative years age 10 to 14 with his family in Montreal. Okay. He so he is Spanish born French. in the Dominican, but he is yes. Canadian-ish. Yeah. So that's cool. Yeah. That's awesome. But just for, yeah, he's only here for like four years. So he's he's so as why? Canadian as Ian Asbury from uh, the yeah, Cult, yeah. the lead singer of the Cult. He's like he's he spent his high school in do you know where? Ugh. Random fact in Hamilton, and that's where he what? essentially See, became I thought, a rocker. That's the thing. I saw the Cult like one my New Year's from my my last year of high school, my OAC yeah. year. So my girlfriend and I went to go see a concert. And it was the Cult and Lenny Kravitz. It was when Lenny Kravitz first came out. Lenny was wearing an all like red and black leather outfit. Comes out with this huge ball of champagne, just bombed out of his mind because he was he was because he was the opener, right? Because yeah. the cult was still bigger. So yeah. I like Lenny, and my girlfriend liked the cult, and I, I I thought they were Canadian. Like I'm like, oh, cool Canadian band. Yeah. I would so love to he's see not Canadian. Well, the band is but Hamilton he's not. Tiger Cats jersey. Oh man. Yeah. Actually, I got I, I mean, it's 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 not baseball, but I got a good Lenny Kravitz story that that needs to be told. Um, I don't know if you remember, there was this old, uh, it was Labatt or Molson that used to do the the blind dates in the nineties. Oh yeah, 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 it was like you know a, a, a huge artist in a on a yeah. random bar, and you had to win tickets yeah. to get in. And this is this is sort of pre you know prominence of the internet, so we had to do some homework. And oh yeah. The Smashing Pumpkins were playing in Toronto uh, the night before and then two days later in Detroit. So me and my buddy, we'd figured it out and we knew where the bar was. It was this place called The Knack in the south of London when, when we were at Western. We're like, oh, yeah, it's going to be The Pumpkins, The Knack. And we and we were just talking about it. We'd figured it out. And all of a sudden, Lenny Kravitz pulls up on his Harley right beside us on the street. <laughs> we're like, really? Lenny, what's up? <laughs> like, hey, guys. Wow. And then brrr, I'm like, okay, I think we're going to change our, uh, our guess on this yeah. one. Yeah. Because yeah. he used to, he used to ride his Harley you. around, you know, towns that he'd never been in. When Whenever we go play them, so. he's he's yeah. a good dude too. I, I oh, like yeah. him in just in general. He I love his he's, early he's stuff. Tall. He's pretty short. No, he's not. And yeah. his and his daughter's become quite a hit now. Oh yeah, Zoe. She yeah. was Catwoman. I oh, I finally saw the Batman. Oh, it's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. Right. I, I I like the, the dark dialogue Batman. was terrible. But I also like I also like the cheesy um, Adam West Batman. You know. Yeah. Pure West. Well, they say in the new Flash movie with uh, with that weirdo. Oh yeah, um, they, they go to have, alternate like, timelines. Yeah, yeah, they go to alternate gonna timelines. Have, yeah, but uh, I don't know if that guy's going to last much longer. Like, I don't mind him. I know. Sorry, no. What's I think he's a he's the they. He's a, his pronouns are yeah are them Whatever. they. I think. Yeah, yeah. He's, uh, he's he's actually pretty funny as the Flash. And the Flash is actually sort of a comedic character. It's not like. You yeah. know, Thor kind of comedy, um, which no, I do he's like comedy relief done. kind of thing. He's comedy yeah. relief, yeah. But no, I think that's his only going to be his only turn. I don't think they're going to give him the Flash after what he's been going through. Oh, yeah. Okay, you know. I, I don't know. <laughs> Yo, go read about. I'm not even going to mention. Go read about it. You just right. gonna be like, well, here, let's. Wow, what a what a weirdo. Let's uh, take a little stage ten commercial break here. Yep. It's 19 minutes. We're just flying through this. Yep. Well, hey kids, do you want to be a podcast superstar like us? Host a YouTube or a Twitch channel or create a video blog? Then Stage App app, the st Stage 10 app, I should say, can turn your computer into a production studio by adding graphics, music, and playing videos on the fly, as well as pulling in multiple guests from all over the planet. Some from as far away as China. Um, the f yeah, that would be Jeff. Yeah. The uh, friendly staff will help out with any problems that may occur, and they've bailed us out on many occasions. Stage 10 allows you to broadcast simultaneously to multiple platforms and all social media sites. So if you want to be cool like us, Stage 10 can make you look good. 
Oh, look at that. Look good. Look at that, look at that. For those of you that do look. not have the video aspect of this, Jeff is showing his luscious locks. Yep. Uh, I'm turning into a, uh, what's that Prince? Not William, the other one. Harry? Oh, no. Uh, no, no, uh, actually, no, no, William, yeah. Yeah, we'll go with William, yeah. Yeah, but at least the, William uh, got the, the, got the hotter wife. Yeah, it's weird. He got the it's hotter wife. Like, it's, like Meghan Markle's we're like hot, what, don't a, get me wrong. We're like, what, about a month into King Charles? Is that, yeah, it is, is kind of is weird. It? And you know, the funny thing is he's probably going to last like four years and die because he's so friggin' old. <laughs> <laughs> well there's sorry your, Charles. there's your That's there's true. your deadpool bat oh yep oh deadpool 3 is coming out soon yay really yeah like a, like clint eastwood's there's doing the deadpool? There's oh you trailers, mean oh. So. sorry i i don't even know why i went there i was thinking like like dirty harry deadpool it was like no no Dead. deadpool like you know ryan, ryan reynolds, reynolds. reynolds yeah yeah that's yeah. awesome yeah. Hopefully, we can collaborate with him someday with business stuff. Ooh, that's nice. That would be Angel cool. investor. Yeah. yeah. All right. So, so Ryan, if you're listening, Ryan Reynolds, we could use some help with our wonderful company that is very which we'll friendly. Tell friendly. you about later. We'll tell you about like 15 yeah. minutes from now. Yeah. Um, but well, I let's... figure we should we should uh, yeah. discuss who we think award winners Jays, Jays and league wide. Because, you know, the, the season finishes this weekend and then the playoffs start on yep. uh, next week. we got three more games left. So yeah. let's go Jays for Those are the Jays one. Who is your Blue Jay MVP? The Blue, oh, like Alec player Manoa. Wise. Oh, pl- no, no, okay, don't. So, no. We'll, we'll do like position player, pitcher. Okay. And then uh, I guess an overall. I don't even think we have any rookies on our team, do we? Not really. No. And and the, the, the crowd part about it is like – is Manoa can almost be a rookie because this is his first full season. Like, no, but, it's not. Yeah, because he started May last year. Yeah. Um, so it, it doesn't okay, really. So, anyway, who, so who's your best, like, hitter, fielder? Oh, Brad Zimmer. Oh, yeah, totally. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I say yeah. this, I say yeah, this Brad with, Zimmer. with my hitting prowess at the plate. No, but I'm, mm-hmm. uh, I, like, I. I don't know. I mean, I guess you got to go with Vladdy. Like Vladdy still leads in most categories. Um, Actually, he, yeah, he leads in anymore. home runs and batting average and slugging. You know, our RBIs. Like he's. It, it's weird, but Bo is literally just behind him in RBIs, but doesn't have as many of the power numbers. And oh, actually, sorry, uh, Bo has got a higher better average. batting average. He's got a higher average, yeah. yeah. But Bo has has had that surge in the last little bit, whereas Vlad's been consistent, right? Um, yeah, see, it's tough for me. It's, I'd say, in the, I've had, I've been thinking about this for the you know couple hours that we've thought about it. Um, it's weird because I think if you're talking an overall season, like from beginning to yeah. end, it's hard to pick somebody. But if you go month by month, there's an MB, different oh, MVP, MVP, MVP each month, yeah. Right? Well, that's but that's, so, that's what I've said. Like, because, if you look at each game, like, there's always been a different guy that's come through, yeah. And there's no there's nobody that has standout numbers from anybody else. It's like Bo and Vladdy, basically. Right? Look, look at Lourdes, um, though. I Kirk just, I just up looked there, at Lourdes. Kirk... Lourdes is batting averages tied with Bo's. Yeah, That's... but Lourdes has got how many less games than Bo? Oh, 40 less it's games. So, hurt, right? Sorry, 37 to be exact. Yeah, exactly. So you got to go with guys who are playing every day. I mean, you could throw, like, first half MVP would have been Alejandro Kirk to me. Yeah. But Alejandro hasn't done much in the second half of the yeah. season. Like not, like he's been he's been all right, but he doesn't have what he had. And then and then you could do Danny late Jansen. summer. Dan, Danny go. Jansen has been consistent since the injury at, and then the, come back. Yeah. Look at the OPS numbers. If you look at the OPS numbers, I know Danny Jansen doesn't have enough at bats to qualify for the OPS title. He has yeah. the highest OPS on the team. He's eight oh. Danny no, Jansen. No, no, no. Uh, yeah. Where is he? Where is he? Where is he? Eight seven. Eight sixty seven. Wow. Nice. Yeah. He's like he's leading the team better than Bo. But better that's, than but Vladdy, that's what I've said Matt about Chandler. Jansen. Everyone says you know Kirk, 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 and uh, Jansen's got more home runs. He's he's a little less in the batting average, but in every other one, um, Kirk's yeah. got mo- double the at bats. But Danny's right there with him, like in, yeah. in you and know, that's final the thing. Sets. So because of the way he's played now that he's been healthy and he's proven that he's a clutch hitter, yeah. Kirk's gonna get traded, and for like, and I for like the last two weeks, I, you can even say Whit Merrifield. 
With, yeah, exactly. He's, he's like even Jackie Bradley Jr. has had some big hits. Yeah. Ta- Tappy has had some big hits. I mean, I think if I was going to go with one guy, I would just because of what he's done for the whole team in general, mm-hmm. I'm going to say Matt Chapman. Oh, that's because a good one. Yeah, I like that. He solidified yeah. the defense like you wouldn't believe. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. he had his he had a tough he had a rough start. Tough but he's start. been one of the yeah. best hitters on the team since like since the mid part of the season. So, I mean, overall, he changed the dynamic of the team just by being Matt Chapman. Yeah. Right. Just by his defense alone, and he's hit a lot of home runs. Um, he does strike out a 27. lot. Twenty-seven. But I mean, uh, one hundred and sixty-nine. Yeah. But I mean, guys strike out. Oh, he struck out more than Teoscar. Ooh. Yeah. Well, he's played more games because Teoscar got hurt too, right? Yeah. Um, but yeah, Chapman's so been Oscar would have taken that title in there. second. Yeah. Chapman's been there every day. Yeah. He's been a good guy in the lineup. You know, he stretches the lineup out. Um, I so I for me that's my player because but that, not that enough... was that was also our big off season signing too, like uh, from the field aspect. For right? the trade, yeah, yeah. For, for me, it's just because there's nobody's nobody's offensive numbers stand out from anybody from no. like there's no one that's above. So but that's, for me, but that's good because then you've got like yeah. a threat from kind of everywhere, right? Exactly. As opposed I mean, to if you look at the Vlad- Yankees, Judge, that's it. Yeah, like Vladdy's had a down season for, by his standards, but he, again, oh, he's still sure. one of the best hitters we've got, right? Yeah. But he still he grounds into way too many double plays. He's pounding the ball into the dirt. And it's driving yeah. me nuts. It, and, I and don't you, know how he ha- he's got to fix that neck for next year. You're going to fix he's his just swing. been doing it so. Oh, but much. but that's the good thing about him is he does the homework and he comes back better. Yeah, like, I just wish he could do it during the gosh darn season. That would be two nice. Two saves, two saves, nice. Gosh darn, we nice. gotta um, get you tired so yeah. more often. <laughs> so that pitcher, you're saying it's a rem- you're saying it's Manoa. Oh God, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, like, I mean, if, I, give it a, wanna, I give it almost a tie with, with Romano, though. Like, yeah. You're talking well, it's th- 35 me, saves. Me. 35 saves. But, I mean, Manoa, Manoa is, as you, as you said, he's second in innings pitched. He's 16 and 7. 180 strikeouts. Like, he's not a – I think he's, he's, he's 30 ERA. League like or third, whatever. Fourth, yeah. Whip. Yeah. But, but sure. his, his games – like whenever whenever the Jays are, are playing and he's pitching, you're like, oh yeah, we, we got this. Like it's 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 you know the la- it's I can't remember the, the last time we had a guy like that. I, yeah. It would have to even go back before the 2015. Excuse me. Oh no, like, that, that's what I'm saying. The last time we had a guy like that was guys were great. Yeah, he's turning into like a Halliday. Halliday, yeah. You yeah, know, it's, like it's... when he pitches, you're gonna have a good chance to win. I, I also I also do have none. to throw a bone out to uh, to Ross Stripling because I I've, I've yeah. always been a Ross Stripling fan because he's he's bounced around to whatever whatever they needed him at and killed it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, like the, in the rotation, he's like since the since he's been put in the rotation, he's one of the top five pitchers in baseball. Oh yeah, yeah. It's in yeah. If we didn't have Stripling, we would not be in the playoffs. No. I mean, you could say you can make an argument for his MVP of the whole team. Yeah. Right. Like. Well, that's that's overall, the that's really that's your that's your statement. Like you said, they should always have an MOP and an MVP, like someone who is the most outstanding, essentially, in the league, and then the most valuable to your team. And he would most exactly. definitely, it, I would see that. It, yeah. And that could be the same person some years. Like it's obvious that can happen, right? But yeah, I think they need to make that distinction just because Otani's pushed it that way. Oh, yeah. Speaking of Otani, did you see what what other new historical thing he's done? I don't know. On Friday, he signed the largest contract for an arbitration eligible player. Oh, okay, that's thirty. He signed for 2022 or 2023 for thirty million dollars. Dollars, one wow. year, thirty million dollar contract. That's why he went back to the Angels. I don't understand because he eh, was going to be familiarity. You know what I mean? Yeah. It is, but I don't know. I thought I thought they were going to trade him. I really did. He's well, not, I mean, that's, that's the thing. Is like they've signed this contract, and they can probably like look who wants I mean, to pick could. up thirty million. They won't. I mean, yeah. they're not going to, but they Cause, should. Because think of how many times the Jays have done that, like signed a killer contract and then traded him away right away. You know, well, not right away, but I mean, this is now a contract that's now off the books. 
Yeah, and all I got to say is thank you, Los Angeles Angels, for taking Vernon Wells off our hands at that point. Oh my god! Remember, remember that that. Okay, yeah. so so here's here's the it crazy thing, contract. and and he was supposed to be their massive star center fielder, and then got injured, yeah. and then some kid comes up from the minors, and, and then he Mike started Trout. sucking butt. No, but Mike Trout was his replacement. Yeah, and like pretty yeah. much one of the best WAR guys ever was the yeah. replacement player. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's like it's weird how he just fell off. It's like he's like Ricky Romero. They started out yeah. really well and they fell off the face of the earth. Yeah, it just but that but that's it just happens. that's uh, that's what that, that's what happens. Like that that also shows you that he was a legit player. Like there wasn't you know performance enhancing or anything like that. It just happened to have his peak, and then he was done. Yep. So yeah. Vernon for the, Vernon had a little five year window when he was with us. Like oh, he's great. He was, he was amazing. Like he really yeah. like one of the, he one of the best. Like he could have. He rivals Devon White in terms of best defensive well, center we've, fielder. We've we've had a plethora of killer center fielders, we've, and and we've, we've been it's, it's crazy. We've, like let's see. and and I mean Springer now. If Springer could play a full season, like Springer would yeah. be a legend. Like he's he, he's awesome. Like but he would be a legend. Mosby you know? and Mosby, Mosby yeah. turned into Devon White. Yeah, and then Devon White turned into. Well, I think there was a bit of a gap. Well, there was there. a little bit of then a lull. Vernon came in. Vernon came in because there was right. there was a couple of guys that would that would sort of you know sort of rival that. What was his name? Reed Johnson wasn't really a center fielder, but that guy could actually. Yeah, he was more of our left down. field guy. Yeah. And then um, after Vernon, then you had um, Stewart. He played center for a little bit. Yeah. Then Kevin Pillar was a good defensive. Oh, defender. Kevin Pillar. Well, Kevin Kevin Pillar um, was was phenomenal in defense. And then the first month, you always think, "Yeah, he's gonna kill it." And then he would be, be like, you know, leading the league in batting average and stuff, and then just sort of drop down. But his defense never did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. like just like Randall Gritchuk. Yeah, yeah, same thing. And oh, that I'm actually quite interested. I didn't even think about that. How did Gritchuk do this year? <laughs> Oh, let's have a quick look. Um, uh, 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 well, Jeff is looking into that. You it, know what? I, war, will, I You got it? You got it. Yeah. Yeah, I got it. Yeah. His war is 0.4. His OPS oh. plus is 93. He has 18 home runs playing in Coors. Oh, wow. That's, and that's a homer-friendly yep. state. 262 <laughs> batting average. 71 RBIs, almost 500 at bats. Slugging is 423. His, o his on base is 303. His OPS is 727. His career OPS is 760. Like yeah. he basically, he basically was himself. Yeah. But his batting average was higher than usual. So he, it looks like he he's turned into a singles hitter, from what I can gather. Shingles. I don't know why I tried to do yep. a Sean Connery in that one, but all right. Well. Ooh, it's, it's it might it might be time for a uh, commercial break. Yeah. So I'm gonna I'm gonna hey hey Ryan Reynolds. Look at that. Look at that. Boom. The fast fashion industry makes up 10% of all CO2 emissions and pollutes and dries up water resources. 85% of all textiles end up in the dump each year. Do you want to change those stats and look good while doing it? Shop the Canadian Way. Clothing created by the Canadian Way is made from repurposed, recycled, and or biodegradable materials. Manufactured in CO2 neutral sites by workers who are paid a proper wage and within this great country of ours. So if you're tired of contributing to the endless supply of garbage produced by humanity, then shop the Canadian Way. Starting fall 2020, visit thecanadianway.ca. I'm not going to throw I'll this tell you one back thing on about that. Yeah. If you're worried about, if you want to see how bad the fast fashion industry is, go on Google Maps or Google Google Earth and go look mm -hmm. at the Chilean desert. You'll see a great big pile of clothing growing bigger and bigger by the day because they have nowhere for it to Where go. To put it. Wow. It's disgusting. That's that's the, the that's the land equivalent of the plastic pile in the um, Pacific and the and there's one in the yep. Atlantic too. Yeah, they, they're both caught in big eddies in the middle of the way. Thank God they're not getting on the shore. Right. Yeah. So let's see. Baseball-wise, American League Judge. MVP. Judge. Yeah. Just because. Just because. Like it's not a. It's not a thing. Like and 
And as you were saying, yeah, he might get the triple saying, crown for Christ's sake because of the Yankees. But here's here's something that I think that's kind of cool. Um, okay, so Roger Maris hits 61 homers in 1961, yep. and it's been 61 years since anyone's hit 61. And yep. That's Judge, right? Exactly. So now we talked about this earlier off off camera, but one thing that has been online, which is ridiculous. Is people saying that this whole thing with Judge is he's not going to be the real home run holder? So it's, it's, you know, it's the American so League this, home run. No, nobody cares about the American League home run guy. And I'm like, um, well, first of all, no. Yeah. You know, second of all, the reason that it's a big deal setting the American League record is because no one's done it since Maris. And it's 61 years. Actual. Yeah. And for the actual the actual records, yeah. it's been National League players. And There's think no of the American, National League is, players that have done it, all juicers, yeah. if you want to do that. And, like 77 for Bonds, 73 for Maguire, and 69, 68, 68 for Sosa. Yeah. But here's the weird thing is everybody always considered the American League the hitters league. Yeah. Like the power league. But it's funny yeah. how it was all National League dudes. So I'm sorry, but that's what, like Otani's great. But oh, he's awesome! If he's going to get a triple crown season and set a, a record for for home runs, I mean, how can you not give it to him? Yeah, but um, here's here's think of this: think of how long it took Roger Maris to beat Babe Ruth, who had sixty, yeah. and that was yeah. like the twenties, like twenties, yeah, or maybe at least forty, yeah, at least forty years. So that was like forty so, years, and it took another sixty years in a. Like in 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 during the juice era, uh, yeah. a ju juice era, I should say, and like a sixty-one years, yeah. And Frankie yeah, it's, Lazan, it's really it's really it. weird that way. It's bizarre. <laughs> um, I don't Lasagna. really understand it. And you know what? Frankie Lasagna wasn't the guy who missed the ball. That was a different dude. The guy who actually missed the ball, his name was Kyle. Like the guy on TV who looked really, really upset that he that the ball. Like, did you hear what they said in the broadcast about that poor guy? So the ball comes. You, something happens. The guy gets his hand down, and the ball just misses his glove. And Ten Shulman goes, "Oh no, we're, we're, we're Buck. One of the two. He's like, oh, if that guy's arms were just two inches longer, he'd be uh, he'd be making hundreds of thousands of dollars." Like, but, but think yeah. of think of that Steve Bartman game for the Cubs. There was like nine people fighting for that ball, and yeah, you know, and he happened to be he the just one happened that to be it. the one to hit. Yeah. yeah, but there was all um, those people. Yeah. So the guy who missed it was on Jimmy Kimmel's show. Because every it's been going viral with this guy so upset because they kept cutting to him and the yeah. and Buck and Dan kept making fun of the guy because he, he was just like oh, rrr, rrr. And he's throwing his hat down he's throwing shit and he's like all right he's, he's all pissed off so Kimmel brought him on and invited him to go um, to New Year's Eve um, in New York City so he could, so he could watch the ball drop. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that's awesome that's and the guy's like yeah that'd be cool like, yeah dude not you just, realizing you're you being what made he just fun did of. to you it was so funny yeah yeah um so yeah i agree with judge cy oh, young easy. uh well yeah, okay that's has... that's uh baseball wide uh or we're just doing uh because i mean if you if you want to throw a bone out to the national league i i would well, we'll say do the national league too but the American League, it's, it's Verlander. It yeah. has to be. Yeah. It's amazing what he's done. But, but I mean, Alec Manoa, Alec Manoa can, can rival it as well. well like, he's going to get some, he's gonna get some Cy Young. Yeah. yeah. He'll but, get second and third for sure. I mean, how long was um, Verlander out for? Dylan Cease is going to be up there. He was out for two months, right? At the beginning of the season. Verlander. Yeah, Verlander's got less, but I mean, those numbers are still you oh, know, it's Verlander ridiculous. numbers. It's gonna be yeah. it's gonna be Verlander one and either Cease or Manoa two or three. That's probably yeah. how it's gonna be. Mo they'll probably vote for Dylan Cease because America. Yeah. You know, but that's what's gonna happen. Um and the rookie of the year, it's gotta be the kid from Seattle, Rodriguez, Seattle. Julio Rodriguez. Yeah. I don't see how it could be anybody else. Yeah. Um now if we go to the National League, I'm not as well versed in the rookies of the National League. 
I, I'm a little less on that one as well. But that, but that one I is – in, in terms others. of the MVP, that's actually kind of wide open. You got a couple of guys that could probably get that. Um, uh, you've got Paul Goldschmidt who's always – He's always up in, in, in those and, and always up in the triple crown. I, I'm telling you right, he's going to get it. Yeah. That's, but that's Freddie Freeman's be actually done pretty well too. Like he doesn't have the home yes. runs, but he's he's killing it. So, okay. So here's the guys. I have two, 2022 Rookie of the Year odds. Um, there's a guy named Michael Harris. on the, there's two, Actually, actually yeah. the two highest rated are two Braves. There's Spencer Strider, the pitcher, uh -huh. who is a strikeout machine. Um, but he's now got an injury uh, for the rest of the season. And then there's Michael Harris, the second, I think his name is. Yep. And he's odds on favorite to win. Yeah. Um, the rookie of the year, they said it's who between Julio Rodriguez, Adley Rushman, and George Kirby for the Mariners. And the National League wants to be Michael Harris, Spencer Strider, and I, well, here's, I've never heard the Edward Cabrera from the Marlins. I mean, Michael, you know, okay. just throw out a Cabrera. It's, there's well, always going to be a good the Cabrera. Odds. Michael Harris, minus 390. Spencer Strider, minus <sighs> plus 270. Edward Cabrera, plus 50,000. Nick Lodolo of the Reds, plus 50,000. And Brendan Donovan of the 50, Cardinals, 50,000 or 5,000? 50,000 50, or 5,000? 50. 50. 50. Wow, that's so two dollars It's going to be Julio Rodriguez in the American League. It's going to be Michael Harris probably in the National League. Yeah. Um, and his numbers are he's hitting Seven. 306. That's his number. He's hitting 306. 306. Nice. His OPS is 982. 19 home runs, 27 doubles, 3 triples, 20 stolen bases, and 108 games. Wow. Now, Spencer Strider was 10 and 4, 277 ERA, 165 strikeouts in 107 innings. As a starter, yeah, he struck out over thirty percent of the hitters he's faced in his first twenty MLB starts, and that has never been done before. That's crazy. Yeah, so one of those two, but it'll probably be Harris because he played more. Um, so there you go. Um, there's uh, Cy Young Award. Cy, so, like that's the thing is the the one who's who's sort of been for the long, for the whole season and he, and he actually plays on kind of a crap team um but i always like the marlins but sandy alcantara uh yeah but i mean if you look at if you look at there's a there's a leader in every stat like he's i mean you darvish is wins uh if you want to do strikeouts uh i mean you can do corbin burns from milwaukee so it's like depending on what you want to do but i i I'd give it to Sandy Alcantara just based on where he plays. Okay, so ESPN.com. I'm just going to – here's a predictor for the American League Cy Young. They're listing it Justin Verlander, Framber Valdez. Oh, I, I forgot about Kyle Wright. Kyle and Wright Alec Doe is going to be – they think he's going to be third in Cy Young. That's yeah. what the ESPN thinks. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, they think Al Alcantara, they think he's going to be. He's getting out of their things 42 first place votes. Yeah. It's going to be Alcantara for sure. So, but yeah, he's had a great season. Like, Miami's got some really nice pieces. Yeah. They just can't seem to put a whole team together. Well, they, they, they do. Wait, well, this is this is the old Miami slash Florida Marlins kind of thing. Yeah. They would, you know, oh, and, um, uh, build a team out of nothing. Yeah, build a team out of nothing and then years. win a World Series, and their owner would sell everyone. And then they'd yeah. do it again. They'd sell everyone. Yeah, the Jeffrey Loria days. Speaking of that, because that was that was Florida that the Cubs lost against in the Steve Bartman game. Because that was Mike yep. Lowell. When when that happened, yep. he said, "Let's make that guy famous." Oh yeah, and he was very famous. Yeah. Um, yeah. So... Infamous. Infamous. That is more than famous. Yeah. Infamous. You know, it's, it's been it's been a good season. It's been an interesting ball being played. I mean, it's weird how everybody thinks the Jays' season has been not so great, like just overall oh. feeling. But yet we've won. We're going to win like ninety one or ninety two games, which is yeah. just what we did last year. And we're going to make the playoffs. We've made the playoffs for sure. Yeah. But people still think we suck. The amount of people on there who think we suck don't get it. Because they keep uh, here's the thing they keep looking at the entire season when they look at team numbers, right? Yeah. 
And you can't do that when you're. And we we had a stretch have now. When was it? June or July, where we we were like we lost fourteen of twenty games. Yeah, and it was it was bad. It looked bad. But yeah. it, that's the thing: people don't understand, that, or people who just don't want to understand that baseball again it's a marathon and not a fucking sprint it's what that's all it is you've got it you, there's going to be ups and downs like look at the every thought the yankees were unbeatable and then they had an august where they won like five games yeah you know like it's going to happen to every team people who freak out have got to stop freaking out like they just need to stop freaking out okay here then, I, 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 sorry go ahead well, actually, there's a guy. Well, if you're talking about like my pissy Jays fan stuff, there is this guy named Adam in one of my things who thinks that because Pujols has had like a little bit of a renaissance this year to reach 700 home runs, he thinks he's juicing. He's yeah. he actually wrote in a post. He's like, why why would Al Rosen decide to juice so late? Like, there's no other explanation for him to hit 20 home runs. It's like, it's like, well, if you read the articles, he actually says. I'm having more, like, when I went to the, he goes, when I was finishing the Angels, I was not having fun. He gets yeah. traded to the Dodgers, or he signs with the Dodgers, and he rediscovered his joy of the game. Yeah. And that is what's basically done this. And when he got to Seattle or St. Louis again, he took out part of his swing to shorten his swing. That's why he's hitting a lot of home runs, because he's changed. He Again, he's adapted, like he's always done. So anybody who thinks that, He's that his 700 home runs ain't legit. You're stupid. So you don't understand things. And then this woman agreed with them, and I told them they were wrong. And then she just started calling me names. Awesome. Some so 70, it was she like 70 years old and just like fucking calling me names. <laughs> That's too. I was surprised you knew how to use the internet. To be honest with you. Yeah. Um, so it was it was bothering me in terms of the American League records, right? So sixty one for Judge and for Maris, sixty for Babe Ruth in nineteen twenty seven. Babe mm -hmm. Ruth has also hit fifty nine, uh, fifty four on on two occasions as well. Like, yeah. Babe is a killer. But then but then here's you, you go down. There's Hank Greenberg and Jimmy Fox at fifty eight. A-Rod, yep. speaking of juice, at 57. Ken Griffey yep. tied himself in 97 and 98, 56. Jose, mm -hmm. 54. Yeah. It's yeah, it's an interesting list, but yeah, if you take out the guys from the early, early times, yeah. you're talking like, like six or Jimmy seven runs away. And, yeah. hmm. Jimmy Fox and like Hank Greenberg. Hank Green, Greenberg are two of the greatest hitters the big yeah. game's ever seen. Yeah. Not just home runs, just in general. So... Mm -hmm. It's it's been an interesting year for things like people who thought some things were going to work didn't like like um, Josh Hader going to see San Diego and Soto going to San Diego and not really doing anything. Well, like San Josh Diego, Hader, one of the best general. closers out there, went to San Diego yeah. and just sucked. Yeah, just terrible. Um, are they in the playoffs though? San Diego, like, I know, I, San Diego is. Yeah, because I know in the, when you talked about the standings, they were. Like twenty games behind the Dodgers at one point, I think. Let's see, I'm going to stand Well, it's now. it's um, that's the thing. It's like the the playoffs for the American League, where you knew that more of the teams are coming out of the American League East, and you knew it was going to be Seattle, right? So just depending on what position us and Tampa finished, um, but. In the National League, there's a division winner, and then all the other ones are coming from uh, each division. Because you got the Braves and the Mets, yeah, uh, like that are right that are right above each other or right behind each other, um, and then yep. and then the Padres are, are way behind the Dodgers, but the Padres still yeah. have 87 wins. So it's yeah, twenty three games crazy. up, and the, the Phillies have actually played themselves into a playoff spot. That will not into like still competing, yeah. Because yeah. you know, and they were exactly what they said they were going to be. They're going to be a hitting team, mm. semi decent pitching, and they can't field the ball to save their lives. Yeah. They are a horrible defensive team. Yeah. They're just full of a bunch of bats that have to do something. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's bad. It's really bad. <laughs> so yeah, the worst of wild cards. So you got 
So Met, San Diego, and Philly. Yeah, but Milwaukee's yeah. right behind Philly. Yeah. You know, like that's going to be it. like San Francisco's out of it. So that's it. It's in between Philadelphia and Milwaukee at this point. Yeah. I think San Diego's pretty much clinched second place in the wild card, the second wild yeah. card. So it's between Philly and Milwaukee. So let's see. So Philly's playing Washington and Milwaukee's playing Miami. Uh, so uh, I think you have uh, to give. I think you have to give oh, Philly the edge. Yeah. Because Miami you know? can play spoiler. Washington can't do anything really. They're no. terrible. They're, yeah, they are the worst of the worst. The only team so far with 100 losses in the National League. Uh, 103. Yeah. And Oakland's the only one in the American League. Actually, it looks like Oakland will be the only 100 loss team in the American League. Because there's uh, only three or four yeah, games oh, yeah. left. And the city's got 94. So. Yeah, and Pittsburgh could, Pittsburgh and Cincinnati could both do it. Yeah. Yep. Go for three, okay. guys. So one thing I, uh, another thing I want to say is I want to say kind of a congratulations to a, a weird one. Congratulations to the Baltimore Orioles for getting to 81 wins. Yeah. So they've guaranteed for, of themselves a 500 record. For for supposedly and being the team that, that was going to be the worst and yeah. trading away their best player at a – at the deadline and becoming their better and their closer. Yeah. And yeah, becoming better. I mean, the run differential is minus nine, which is nothing. Um, yeah. But they, but they, if it happens, they, or if it would have happened, they hold the tiebreaker against us. Cause they beat us in the series. Like, all of them, Seattle, Tampa Bay and Baltimore all yeah. own the tiebreaker on us. No, but, but just That's Baltimore in general. Win. Yeah. Baltimore in general. Yeah. But that's so, the thing with the wild card. That's why we have to win these three games against Baltimore. Yeah. Because if we don't, like, we could give up the top seed. We have we control our own destiny. We, and and this is a thing with Baltimore. Baltimore and, and us have a big rivalry, so they're not just going to fold down and die. They, yeah. they, they might use it as a chance to bring up some new talent just to show it. But I actually have a feeling they'll stick it to us. They'll try and they'll try and oh, I think they want ruin to ruin it. Yeah. I think they absolutely want to, and I think they are fully capable of doing it. Because um, they're because they're kind of douchey, and it, and I like it. The was it twenty fifteen when we won the division, and they won the division the year before that. Um, we played in uh, in Baltimore for the season opener, and you know they yeah. introduced us, and we're playing Beck's loser in the background. I'm like, that's <laughs> kind of hilarious, but I yeah. hate you. Yeah. You know, it's so, funny how some people. Like, another thing going on is people are starting to hate walk up music. Like oh, it's amazing. It's amazing to me how much people just hate stuff just for the sake of hating it. It's I really love walk up weird, music, man. Oh god, that's one of have the best you, parts about watched, baseball. Have you watched the Edwin Diaz walk up for this no. year? Is, is this the, is this oh. the, the one you were talking about the other day with, with the, the, the sax? The yeah. Trumpet, yeah, yeah. It is so. It's just awesome. Because the one I saw, they actually had a live trumpet cut player come in to do it, and they literally didn't. They didn't even go to commercial. They yeah. stayed on it just to, so people could watch the entrance. And That's it's awesome. this cool kind of Spanish conquistador style music with the trumpet playing <laughs> and this weird like ravey music in the background with it. It's just it's one of the best entrances I've ever seen. And well, it's just yeah, I mean it, Romano's is all. It's all glitzy and glamoury, but his music's kind of neat. There, there was a span for the Jays with like 2006 to 2009 where you could sort of racially profile because we had one black player, which was Vernon Wells, yep. and his walk-up music was hip-hop. We had one Latino, which was Jose Batista, which and his was you know gasolina, <laughs> and then and then everyone else was like country or rock because it was just like redneck white dude. Yeah, Homer Bush. Was Homer Bush, Homer Bush in there at that point? What's well, right? Wasn't Homer Bush playing second around that point? I'm trying to think Maybe. if he was in there or not. I don't even remember. I mean, we don't really some, classify it we, as the Homer Bush era. Yeah, yeah, I, I liked Homer Bush. He was. Oh yeah, bad. like he wasn't the best, but he was all right. No. Um, there was I mean, it was, the John, it was the John McDonald era. You know, yeah. the guy that would come in and just to, you know save a game defensively. Um. On Blue Jay Twitter, they were offering uh, free wallpaper to 100 fans, but you had to put in you had to put in name, number, and the type of jersey. So it was like okay. the royal blue one, yeah, um, the powder blue, and another one. So yeah. I put in 
Collins 10. Yeah, Dave Collins. Because, honestly, he doesn't get enough recognition hmm. for being our stolen base, single-season stolen base leader. And that's 60. In, like, almost... It was in 1984. 60 years. 60 years. Yeah, yeah. Almost, yeah. I, I'm... I, like, I'm my favorite Jay of all time. My favorite Jay of all time. Like, my uh, three of my favorite Jays um, of all time are Roy Halladay, Mark Burley, yep. Yep. and George Bell. George Bell. And I mean, Bo is wearing oh, yeah. 11 right now, but George Bell's the 11. Yeah, George nice. Bell, when he did that drop kick to Bruce oh. Keeson in the yeah. balls, that was great. That's yeah. when I'm like, I like George. He's, but, uh, he's like, crazy. As, as a kid. Not as crazy uh, as Domaso. Domaso was crazy. Uh, yeah. But as a kid, he had, he had, there wasn't like walk up music at that time, but he used to have like the left fielder, number 11. George Bell, and then that clang, clang, clang would play in the background. It was like, oh, I love yeah. that. Yeah. Do you remember when uh, when Domaso Garcia burned his jersey? Burned his uniform? Yeah. 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 And and it sucks too because my you know like I I was always number seven in soccer and I was just like oh <laughs> he burned the seven. Like I sometimes want to get a Domaso Garcia jersey just to be, just to be that guy. <laughs> with some with some burn marks on it. I wouldn't. Would, I, I would. I want to. I want to start collecting obscure Blue Jay jerseys. Oh, I love doing like, that. Like, 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 like taking Mexican. photos of them when I'm out. When I'm out, like like you get it, like running into that dude in a Russ Adams. Was it a Russ Adams jersey? Or where was no, it? Was in Adam China? Lind jersey. In Adam Lind. Yeah. Adam Lind. Yeah. yeah. And and I the, I, like did a a, I did see a I did see a Romero jersey the other day. I'm like, that's awesome. That's crazy. Like it was so weird and the, walking into that store in China. And this is yeah, these guys got a, an authentic Adam Lin jersey, and I'm and I go to talk to him and I didn't really speak Chinese. So that the guy in the store kind of translated a bit, and I'm like, dude, that's I'm from Toronto. That's like Adam Lin. Like that. Where did you get that? And the guys, he goes, I don't know who Adam Lin is. I don't know. Who <laughs> is. I, I know I, a I just, guy. I just have this cool um, jersey. I know a guy, Andy right? Carlton. He has he has an he has a Tim Leeper jersey. And oh he used to he used to run um, like a wine club, and Jose used to be part of the wine club. And Jose Batista even said to him, "He goes, there's two people that have that jersey, and the other one is Tim." <laughs> <laughs> I I had a friend of mine who used to work for the Jays for a long time, and I I was always like he because he 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 had access to rooms and things that kept things from uh -huh. special occasions, so he gifted me. A game worn jersey from the '92 team. Oh, cool! And I believe, or one of the no Greg Myers. No, Galen Cisco. What? Coach? I got a game worn Galen Cisco jersey just um, for remember, just to have one, you know, because Jeremiah Galen, remember, it goes right along with my AJ Burnett jersey that I bought oh. when they signed him. Yeah. That was a mistake. Do you, do you remember Jeremiah? You know, if, you get, uh, our, our, if you got one player on the team right now, whose jersey would you get? Oh, uh, I don't know. It's a tough one. I think I would go Chapman. Yeah. yeah. Manoa. Manoa? 60. Uh, 60 Manoa yeah. yeah. My birthday yeah. is coming up. I'm getting me as a Manoa jersey. I um yeah, I, right. remember you remember our buddy Jeremiah. He has a Ricky yeah, yeah. Henderson Ricky Henderson jersey. Um, and this is like you know like the Blue Jay jersey. Midnight, but this is also mid nineties when no one was going to games. And Jeremiah ran on the field and stole second and slid into second, <laughs> and he's framed really? it with Sky Dome dirt on a Ricky Henderson jersey. Yeah. Did he get thrown in jail for that? No, that was that was before those idiots in Chicago, like at the White Sox games, like the dad and the son went and kicked the crap out of the coach, and then everyone oh, was yeah. like, "Okay, now you gotta." Well, hey, we were talking about that kind of. You're talking about Chicago. All you gotta yeah. think about is disco night. Do, oh, you, do or, you remember? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah they yeah. And and, and yet again, Chicago White Sox burnt the field. The White Sox had some really bizarre. Yeah. promos and that was the worst one because they just had a big <laughs> pile they had of records and burned them in it the middle of center the, field it was in the middle of a double header and they had to forfeit the game yeah. it was yeah. such a like what yeah. <laughs> like, and that night team, the, uh, that's another one what's that, that that banana team that's out there now the alabama oh, the, uh, or yeah. whatever yeah they have guys coming out there wearing stilts yeah going on in the field like i, I gotta watch one of these savannah banana teams yeah that, it's 
We uh, so we got to cut it because we're at uh, 59 okay. and 40 seconds. So, kids, cool. go playoffs. We'll Thanks for watching. Um, yeah, make sure you pay attention to us. All right. Like and subscribe. Woohoo. Later.